Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. We're starting anew here, and it's a critical hour in the church history. It's a time for us to stop playing games and to arise. I want to share something really quickly from the Word, and it's found in Isaiah 43. And it's in verse 18, and I want to start verse 19 as well. And it says, Do not remember the former things, nor the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. May those words burn in our hearts like fire. Paul said, forgetting that which lies behind, he pressed on. He pressed on towards the prize and the goal of the upward call. Forgetting that which lies behind, the good and the bad. So many believers are held captive by all their failings, all the things that they did wrong, and all the injuries and hurts. And the enemy always wants you looking back. He wants you to remember the good old days or be held captive by the bad old days. It's time for us to come to the altar of the Lord, to the one who's able to heal the brokenhearted, so that we might rise and shine in this hour. God wants to do something great, and we enter a year of amplification for what we do, what we say, has so much more impact, and it's more critical now than ever. There's so much at stake. The hour is late, and we are placed, anointed, and appointed at such a time as this. You've been placed in your family. You've been placed where you're at. And there are your loved ones, your children, your family. Life's at stake. And if you don't arise, if you don't make a stand, if you don't lay a hold of the authority of who you are in Christ, who will? And if we keep looking back, we will not see what's really ahead. We will not arise with the boldness and confidence to come boldly before the throne and to lay a hold of those promises and make a difference. Join with me as we press in to receive a real, now powerful word that I know will bless you and enable you to start strong in this new year. So, Father, we pray. In the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we come by way of the blood, and I ask of you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Shake us. Move us. So impact us. Wreck us. And bring us to a place, Father God, where we are fully sold out to you. And we recognize who you are. And I thank you for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart, that your word would have such an impact. We would hear and do your word. Father, I thank you that we would truly arise and shine and be true witnesses, bringing you glory in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Now, if I continued in Isaiah 43, verse 19 goes on to say, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. In the midst of that which is dry, in the midst of all that has fallen and failed, he wants to come and restore and make new. He wants to cause a river to flow, to change the very climate, the place where nobody wants to go. You know how many of us, we have so walked, held captive by a past, so filled with the injuries and hurt, that nobody wants to know us. Nobody wants what we've got. But there's a change coming by the mighty hand of the Lord God. If we will come to the altar and allow the true power of the finished work of the cross in our lives, He wants to so change you, to bring you to well, where you take of the water of salvation and are utterly changed until rivers flow. Rivers flow from you in the midst of every circumstance and situation that have life to it. And everywhere they go, they bring life. They cause you to arise and you get hold of the promises of God and you stand and you say, God, you can't fail your word. Father, you won't fail your word. Your word means everything to me and I know it's everything to you. And you take the promises. And if I go back to uh, verses Let's see here. Five. 
fear not, for I am with you, and I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. It is a time for us to rise up and time to cry out and say, God, they need to come from the north, the east, the south, and the west. Like Ezekiel, where we get a hold of the promise and declarations of the Lord. And we lay hold of them and get impregnated with the vision God has. And begin to speak and declare. And declare to the dry bones, you shall surely live. And say to our daughters and sons who have astray, gone off, Behold, come to the table of the Lord. To declare those calls that are in them, that it be stirred up. That this will be the year where we stand in the gap and cry, God have mercy on them. Bring them to true repentance. Bring them back, Father. I want to go, if you will, to 1 Samuel chapter 22. Because as we started here, we've got to understand what it really means to let go. To let go of the past. Look at this. David is a man truly experiencing hardship and difficulty. He is in the wilderness in both spiritual and physical. He is running for his life. The pressure, the strain, and everything that's on this man. And in verse 1, chapter 22, David therefore departed from there and escaped. How many of us are escaping, having to run and hide? And he went to the cave of Adullam, which means justice for the people. So as when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down to him there. Now, I want to start and say something here, that if you go back and you read the story of David, his brothers and his father were not on his side initially. He was in the field when, you know, Samuel came, and they forgot, oh, we have another son out there. When he was supposed to be in the battle, and he turns up, they complain. But God changed him worked on them, and we have come into a season where God is beginning to work on the hearts. If we will stay the course, if we will stand strong in the Lord and allow Him to change us, we so focus on God, change them. And God says, I need to change you. I need to do a work in you. I need to make all things new in you. And then, when He's done a change in us, it's not the circumstances that need to change. It is us. The circumstances hadn't changed, but God was working on David. And then it says in verse 2, And everyone who was in distress and debt, and everyone who was discontented, gathered to him. If you're ever starting a church, I mean, the people you want are the people that are like this. They are in distress, debt, and discontented. Oh my goodness, they're not usually the ones you want. How many people? I like the people that are depressed, discouraged, in debt. Come! But they are the very ones that Jesus went after. They're the very ones that came to David. Now, let me say something. You are the company you keep. And you can either become like those who come running to you. Or you become like those, like the one you go after. And what makes David so incredible, and what we need to learn from David, is that David was pressing forward seeking the Lord, such that he took these people that were dis distressed, in debt, and discontented, and he made them mighty men. He changed them because you cannot give what you ain't got, but he had something. And if we are to change and to see our loved ones touched, then it's got to start with us, and we've got to have something to give. We've got to have life. We've got to have that anointing. We've got to discover that my sufficiency is from Him and not of myself. And I've got to come into the secret place of His presence and know Him like never before. Go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63, 
which is regarding this event, shares insight into the very heart of David. Insight that will help us as we press into this new year. And he starts, so God, you are my God. Uh, many of us, we serve the Lord because we're programmed to. We do and we follow the crowd. I mean, we believe in him, but we're not doing it out of something, a real pursuit. That he has become everything to us. That um, <clears throat> I'm not going simply because that's what we do at church. He finds me behind the scenes seeking his face because he is my God. He is everything to me. And when I go to church, it is really the uh, afterglow of a life hidden in the secret place. There's more of me behind the scenes seeking the Lord because He is my God. You have to build strength. You have to build yourself so that there's more of you behind the scenes seeking the Lord because He is the Lord your God. In these challenging and difficult times, you cannot survive on doing the minimal. You cannot work out what's the least we can do. I remember when I did my undergraduate degree, I was like, what's the least? If I got a C or I got a passing grade, good. But when I got into my postgraduate, I was like, I want the best. I want everything. And that is my heart today. God, I'm not satisfied with simply surviving. I want all. I'm not satisfied with living a life of brokenness, of being wrecked, of being emotionally destroyed of seeing that I have nothing to give. Oh, I had a head full of knowledge, but there was a substance. There is a life. I wanted a wisdom. I wanted words that did something that touched. I could spend hours practicing a speech that I thought would so touch and change a life. And then watch as I said those words so dramatically, carefully, skillfully, and without any impact. And I'm like, Lord, how am I blowing it? He said, your sufficiency is none of you. It goes on. Early will I seek you. Early or earnestly. You can read it either way. You go after him. You start your day. God, I want the fresh morning manna of your presence. I can't live this day unless I've connected with you. I'm pro proactive. I'm going after you first. You have first place in my life, first place in my heart. So that when I'm in the day, I have a substance. So that when I meet opportunities, I have something to need to give. So that I have something to meet the need. Most of us, we're running on empty. And we've got to look at the story of the ten virgins. Many of us go without any oil. It's time to change that. It's time to repent and get before the Lord and say, God, earnestly I seek you. Early I seek you. My heart is set on you. And in this new year where the warfare is intensified, it's time to pick up our game plan. It's time for us to get bolder and louder. It's time for us to understand that when you were going through persecution, you are placed on a platform where all the tension is on every word you say, and it gains amplification. They're listening to you, they're watching you. If your family are going after you, if they're going, calling you all kinds of things, then rise up and understand that's an opportunity. If you will get into the secret place and allow him to change you, and allow him to be seen through you, then that you will truly be a witness of one, who in the secret place the Holy Ghost has come and taken a hold of your heart and written the law of the Spirit on it and made you, made you a witness. He goes on, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Not for the things of the world. Not for all the uh, blessings and other. I want you, God. My most important and first desire, God, I need you. Most of our prayer life is based upon our needs and our wish list. We come before the Lord because of the things we need. And the extent of our prayer life is as long as our prayer list. We prayed all this, God, thank you. And we leave. It's got to get deeper. 
He has got to become so much more that you long for Him, that you this year would get such a glimpse of His glory, such a glimpse of Him that you would long for Him, that you would desire Him, and it becomes so real, you become so conscious of His presence with you and in you, ever changing you, ever transforming you. He said, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. We just read about what God wants to do in the deserts, in those places nobody wants to go because they're inhospitable. They kill you. And in the place where you are being put to death and all your flesh hates it, it's been killed. You've gone through things. You've gone through injuries of the past and you have to place it on the altar and it hurts and you've got to turn to the Lord God and trust Him that say, God, I give it to you. I will not worship this thing. I pay, pick these sacred cows and I put them on the altar and say, God, have them. They have consumed me for too long. You are Lord, and I trust that you will come and heal this brokenhearted. My life is given to you. You're able to keep that which is given to you. And you, oh Lord, have promised that you will not allow the enemy to snatch me out of your hands. I trust you. Oh, in the secret place, it is a safe place. It is a place where you were kept. You were able to come in the secret place and open up. And to so pour out before the Lord God. To cry out until it's laid on the altar. And you say, God, I'm entrusting it to you. I trust you. Your circumstance don't have to change. But you change. And you discover a God who's bigger and real. And he's able to do such a work in you. And you find that with after day after day of coming and seeking his face, you are changed. It goes on. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Show me your glory, Lord. Show me your glory. Show me your authority. Show me your power. God, wreck me. So change me. May I be clay and pliable that you might take it and mold it and make it that which you desire. Show me the goodness of your... Look at this. Because your loving kindness is better than life. I don't care what you look at in life and say, that is so good and I want that. There's nothing better than his loving kindness. Demonstrate it so beautifully and perfectly in the cross. And if the mighty Holy Spirit is allowed, he will so open your eyes to see the depth of which Jesus went for you so that that revelation wrecks you and you know that you are so loved and you are a precious treasure and that's why you can trust him and you become to the place where you abide in that love you see the wonder of the blood you see the power of the blood you see the glory of the blood and your life is under the blood the past washed away and now in him all things new and now in him many people are helped and think that things will never change. They've been so held for so long. But this day we come to the altar. And it's not by my might. It's not by my power. But by the spirit of the living God. And this day is the day of salvation. This is the day I choose life. And I look to him. Not my circumstances. David's circumstances did not initially change. But God changed him. And as a consequence he changed people through him. And that's what God wants to do with you. And ultimately, situations and circumstances must change. Paul said these temporal light afflictions produce a far greater weight of glory. And you look at the list of the things he gave as a temporal light affliction. Moses would have given up, but you and I stand here today because he didn't. Because he understood circumstances and feelings don't dictate the Lord my God does and he continued on and he pressed on and we stand here because of the letters he read in the most challenging and difficult times in house arrest when everybody turned and he kept pressing on and thank Jesus oh thank you God that he wrote those letters that bless us and edify and encourage us we stand today because of him men like that 
who dared to pray the price and arise and shine in their generation, serving that and continuing to serve every generation since. He says, my lips shall praise you. Most of us, our conversation is filled with the abundance of what's in our heart and it's brokenness, hurt, rejection, everything else. Let's come to the altar today in the name of Jesus. Let's come to the altar today and lay it before him and allow him to do something in us that only he can do. He can make you whole. He can make you complete. Look at the people in the time of Jesus, the woman with the issue of blood. Tried every source, and we've done that. We've been trying this, we've tried that, and it hasn't helped. It's only made us worse. Let's come to Jesus in our faith, knowing that if we touch the hem of his garment, that place of his authority, we will be made whole. That that day that we touch, everything changes. We go forward. We do not continue held by the past, but we go forward. He said, thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. God wants to do so many things. He wants so much to bless us because he's the God who gives the pressed down, shaken together, overflowing measure, and that's what he wants for you but we've settled for far too less. We have accepted because we've seen ourselves through our own eyes, not through who he says we are, not through what he says is ours, that we might be blessed to be a blessing, not to be consumed in the blessing, not to have a heart set in the blessing, but on him and that we would be a conduit to allow his blessing to so pour forth that whether the circumstances change, it's irrelevant. I stand blessed. I stand here on this earth, understanding this is a blip in eternity, but I'm here for a purpose. Oh, I want and I groan with everything within me for the day to be swallowed up in immortality, be like him, to stand with him, ever with him, changed. But I understand that every single day, every minute that I'm on this earth, I am able to have an impact on the lives of others. I'm able to so know him in a way that I might be used by him to be a blessing on this earth and bring him glory, to arise and to shine that the world might see him in me. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. That's where many of us fail. Because when we go to bed, our mind likes to wander. It likes to drag us back. And you have to take every thought captive and bring it into the obedience of the Lord. I'll never forget in the midst of a broken, difficult season where I'd gone to the Lord and I was expecting some sympathy. And he says, until you take your emotions and your thoughts and you bring them captive to me, you will never experience all the great goodness and mercy I have for you because you're making them Lord. You're creating a wall and blocking so that I'm not able to do that which I desire to do in your life. And there's a place of trust in coming in faith, looking to him, the author and the perfecter of my faith, looking to him and exalting him and allowing him to say, God, have your way in me. God, have your way in me this day, today, in the name of Jesus. And if I fall, I get back up into the secret place that I might know you. There is a pursuit in me. There is a desire, God, to know you and be known by you. Have your way. I want something more real. I want the real thing. So I meditate on you. Instead of the old problems, the hurts, I begin to remind myself of the greatness of our God. I love the words of Mary when she you know, is impregnated. And she turns and says, my soul magnifies the Lord. My thoughts, my emotions, not the old and the hurts and the injuries, which is what we usually do. She turned around and said, my soul, my thoughts, my memories begin to glorify. I'm telling you, you will change so many things and get many breakthroughs as you begin to just magnify the Lord. Run around 
I love to joke and play around, but it's not joking really. Throughout the day, to stop, and I just start to dance, and I begin to praise. And my kids look at me, and I say, I'm having a praise break. I'll sing, be singing a song, and I'm, I'm having a praise break. Because I'm doing it for this man, for this earthen vessel, to make sure that this mind and my soul is fixed on magnifying him. And then with my spirit, I rejoice. Because that strengthens you. His joy is your strength. And as long as the enemy can capture the mind and drag you down so you walk naturally, because you don't have enough strength in you naturally to overcome. You don't have the strength naturally to overcome the brokenness and the hurt. But you do spiritually. Because it's the mighty weapons that are given to us that are spiritual, that are for the pulling down of strongholds. You come into the secret place that God by your hand. And in the name of Jesus, I take this thought captive. And in the name above all names, I take these memories and I bring them to you. Mighty Holy Spirit, come and show me, lead me, teach me. Keep your eyes upon me. Strengthen me on the inner man. And as I abide in your word, I thank you that your word is bearing fruit in me. Doing a work in me. As you look at the parable of the sower, and you look at what Jesus explained, he says how some seed was sown by the wayside. Some seed was sown among the thorns. But the good seed was sown in. And I don't want something sown among, sown by. I want His Word sown in me. So that its Word, His precious Word, is allowed to do everything it has to and produce the fruit. It changes me. And I found that the more time I spend with Him in the secret place, Oh, I may not feel something, but I'm telling you, I sense it. It may be an hour, it may be a day, it may be a week, but I understand I have been changed. I look at the man that I was, and I see the man that I am now. Everything that held me captive, all those things, I bring them to the Lord now. I bring everything. I bring every situation and place it on the altar. Some people struggle with eating or whatever it may be. Bring it to the Lord. Stop trying to overcome it in the natural man and take a hold of the mighty spiritual weapon. Say, Holy Spirit, show me. Teach me. And in the name of Jesus, body, you will walk in a discipline. You will walk right. Lord, teach me. And may I have ears to hear, eyes to see. Show me. Teach me what to eat. And let me walk right before you. He continues, because you have been my help. There you go. I can't do it by myself. And he says, you don't have to. See, we've been trying to overcome all these things in our might, in our strength, and we fail a thousand times. And then the enemy comes in and convinces us, well, that's just the way it is. You're disqualified. Stop trying to do it by your own strength. The Holy Spirit is your helper. So let him come. Receive him, honor him, give him the place of the helper. When I brought, you know, bring an expert to my house to do something, I acknowledge he's the expert and I get out of the way. And I'm like, what do you need me to do? You're the expert, I trust you. And I've now found with the mighty Holy Spirit, you're the expert. Come Holy Spirit, speak into my life. As I spend time on the word, open it up. And I want to build in the word, line upon line, precept upon precept. So that he speaks and he corrects. Any wrong thinking is challenged. And he can come at any point and say, that's wrong thinking. That's wrong. That's just wrong. And I'm, Lord, okay. Okay. It says, because you be my help, therefore, in the shadow of your wings, which could be better translated, in the corners of your seat, seat under the prayer shawl, I should say, sorry, that's a bad. Under the prayer shawl, and the shadow of your prayer shawl, under the edges, the wings of your prayer shawl, I come and I meet you. That's a secret place encounter of such intimacy. A place where I come and we meet face to face. Where we've come in the precious love to know. It's a holy place. It's a pure place. 
It's a place of change. It's a place all eyes on Him. It's a place where I acknowledge Him and I honor Him and I worship Him and I touch His authority and I realize He is Lord and I submit to that. I come and I glory in Him. I come and hear God have your way in this life, in this vessel. I'm looking to you, not in the past. It's not about me, it's about Him. Too much of my life, as sincere as I was, it was about Him, sorry, it was about me, and it needs to be about Him, that I might press on, that I might be changed, that I might have life and have something, that I might share Jesus, have something, so the world sees a life changed. He goes on, my soul follows close behind you. Get your emotions, get your thoughts pursuing Him. Stay close, stay close to the Word. Stay close, keep your mind fixed on Him. Every time a hurt and thing wants to come, go back. Don't let it fester, don't let it get any root quickly get back and say, God, I'm chasing after you. I bring my thoughts. I need your help right now. And I'm telling you, it may initially be every minute of a battle. It may get every five minutes, but you'll get the breakthrough because it's not by your power or might. It's by the mighty Holy Spirit. And the Lord our God has gained a far surpassing victory. You will find that your flesh, it has no endurance, nor does the devil. So by your spirit, learn how to endure and you will overcome. Learn how to say no to the flesh and yes to the Lord. He goes, your right hand upholds me. And it's the right hand that blesses. It's the right hand of authority. Having his authority in your life. I submit to that. I submit to your ways. I submit to your correction. I submit to your rebuke. And said, but those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Understand the true battle. Understand that we're in a spiritual war and that it's not flesh and blood that we're fighting against. It's an enemy. And as you make the stand realizing who you are in Christ and that you've been given the power of attorney of that name, to use that name, to tell that devil, get and go in the name of Jesus. We've got to stop tolerating we allow the enemy to have an inch and he takes a mile. We tolerate. We tolerate sickness. We tolerate this. We tolerate all these things of the enemy in our life. And it's time that the spirit of compromise goes. And we rise up in this new year. And we make a quality decision that, God, I'm going to seek your face. And anything that you are offended at in my life, anything that I've allowed that shouldn't be there, this day we deal with. I'm not putting it off till tomorrow, but this is the day of salvation. And I do it in your name and for your glory. I want your will in my life. And I know that if I ask anything in accordance with your will, you hear me. It puts you in such a wonderful place that you are able to come boldly before the throne of grace and receive it. To walk in such a boldness and confidence and an expectation. So now you can stand for your loved ones. Now you can intercede for your loved ones. Now you can cry out for your loved ones. Bind that spirit of deception. Bind that spirit of lust and everything else that is so impacting the lives of your loved ones. But see, we've walked, not fully submitted. Remember that beautiful story of the centurion. I have authority because I'm under authority. Until we fully submit to his authority, and we humble ourselves under His will, then and only are we able to operate accurately and powerfully in the authority that He gives us, to be able to pray effectively, to be able to ask and receive. He said, they shall fall by the sword, they shall be a portion for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by Him shall glory. By the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. It's time. The enemy has lied to your loved ones and lied too long. We make a stand. It's time that their tongue be stuck to the back of their throat, that lying devil. And that truth, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And may he bring such conviction. May he have the right person, the right place at the right time with the right word. May we be always walking so seasoned with the oh, afterglow of the presence of the Lord. 
and His love. That we would speak only when we should speak. Not producing. See, many of us have caused so much of the problems ourselves. We create a lot of our own persecution because we say the wrong thing at the wrong time with the wrong attitude. And God, He needs to change us. So we stop just saying what we need to say. I remember being corrected by my pastor about a fool who loves to speak his mouth and understand the need to come into the secret place and discipline this tongue by the Holy Spirit so that we say that which he calls to say, when we should say it, only what we should say, and how we should say it. That we're the right place at the right time with the right attitude and the right heart. And that comes when I'm more broken in the secret place, crying out, and I see people through the love, through His mercy. And I desire that His loving kindness so wreck me. And I can speak a truth. And we're able to say the right words. It may be a word of rebuke. It might be a strong word. But it's said with an authority that is backed by heaven. It may be a simple word. But it's said with an authority. I've seen believers, I've seen our sinners get saved at the simplest of statements, spoken with an authority. I remember you know, teaching once in this classroom, and all these students, because I taught biology, we were talking about what's going on in the world, it's all gone crazy. And I said, Jesus is coming. And I didn't mean to, it just came out of the abundance of my heart. Half my students got saved right away. And I'm like, hold on, I haven't preached to you yet. But we don't, how do we know Jesus? Because when it carries a touch, when it carries the anointing of His presence, you can't manufacture that, you can't make that, but it does come as an afterglow of those who abide in the secret place of His presence. This is a time for us to abide in His place, in His presence, and to be wrecked and changed and transformed, that as He is, so too are we in this world. And we rise up, and shine in this hour with His glory. Shine and so the world sees Him. Shine so that the world sees the reflection of Him in a frail earthen vessel, the glory revealed. And Jesus is magnified. This is such a late hour. I don't know how long we've got, but there should be in us a real sense of urgency, imminency. Well, you may say, I believe different regarding the Lord's return, but you can't guarantee me that you have tomorrow or even later today. So we should live as if He's coming back at any moment and plan like He's not for a hundred years. We don't know when He's coming back, but it's very clear it is getting very, very soon. And the warfare has intensified. We must therefore see through His blood people be wrecked and controlled by His love and out of that love see all men as dead and begin to be witnesses Many people are out there, and they're out there preaching something, but they're not a witness. They walk a life of compromise, and they're not wrecked, touched, changed, and we wonder why the world doesn't want it. They said, you're a fake and you're a phony. It's time for us to be real. Made, molded in the secret place. It takes time, but every day and every minute that you give him in the secret place, he's working on you, changing you, and transforming you and making you. And you will find that He is not just in you, He's with you. And that presence, His presence is what makes the difference. It's His presence and it's His leading. It's His pouring into us words. He said, I'll give you the words to say. So let Him give them. And let them come forth with an unction and anointing. Let them come forth in a life that we recognize I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Being revealed through this vessel, and may Jesus truly receive all the honor, all the power, and the glory. It's time for us to get the shout. A shout that cries out to the north, the east, and the south, and the west. It's time for the sons and the daughters to come home. Amen. I really pray that this message has blessed you and encouraged you. And if it has, in the name above all names, the name of Jesus, would you please like, share, subscribe, and give your comments. Because as you do, you really help us with the algorithms, YouTube, Google, and such like.
In this late hour, we are standing to see backsliders brought back and believers living boldly for Jesus. Amen. And I would also ask, if the Lord puts on your heart, if you would like to become a prayer partner to stand either officially or unofficially, officially simply go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner page. You can also become a financial partner. If you become a prayer partner, you will be invited to our Zoom meetings. If you don't have a church right now and you're looking for one, we need a fresh now word. So while you're looking, consider joining our online church service. You can go to robertpairs.org, go to the About page, go to church, and sign up. I just want to finish by reminding you, as always, that you are loved, you are prayed for, and that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, because through and for Him, in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you.